back to the Elephant Lounge. I'm your host, Tuesday. I want to thank you so much for joining me once again. This is episode nine of Why They Are Guilty. I'm going to be talking about confirmation bias. If you're wondering what happened to the last episode, I apologize. I had to remove it because the quality on it was so bad. So I've spent the last couple of days going over everything, trying to figure out what may or may not have happened, perhaps adjusting my settings. I'm going to go ahead and record this in a different way. So hopefully I will work everything out. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for anyway. Way. We'll see how this goes, and hopefully I'll, I'll have done the episode even better. That's my hope anyway. So what is confirmation bias? This is defined as the tendency to interpret new evidence as confirmation of one's existing beliefs or theories. Now, here's the part where I remind you to listen to these episodes in order because I'm building upon concepts and ideas that I've spoken about before. And I have spoke about confirmation bias prior, but the goal of the these filmmakers that make these documentaries about murderers, rapists, and pedophiles, their goal is to get the audience to form a bias, to form a conclusion. And this way, any new information that is given to the listener or the viewer will be interpreted through that lens or through that bias. So instead of looking at things objectively, you will automatically look at things using a particular bias bias. And ironically, you, you'll you think that you're being objective the whole time. It's all about using those fallacious arguments that I spoke about when I talked about logic and fallacies. Those fallacious types of arguments are what you need to look for because that's the emotional manipulation. That's how they get you to, to view all this new information through the lens, this newly developed bias that you've obtained. And again, you might not even and know it. So I have a test for you. And this isn't my test. This test has been around for quite some time, but hopefully it will demonstrate what I'm talking about. You may have seen this test before. If you're somebody that doesn't agree with me and doesn't like what I have to say, I guarantee you haven't seen this test because you probably are not even aware that you are merely confirming your bias most of the time. If you look on your screen, you'll see four cards. This, For the purposes of this test, we're going to assume these are cards and each card has a letter on one side and a number on the other side. So you'll see the A and D. Those are letters. So if you were to turn those over, you would find numbers and the two numbers, two and seven, if you were to turn those over, you would find letters. Now I'm going to just give you a statement. And that statement is, if the letter A appears on one side of the card, the number seven will appear on the other side. Now, what I'd like you to do is out of the four cards in front of you, please pick two. And yes, there is a specific answer here. There are only two cards that you would pick that would test that statement. So once again, that statement is, if A appears on one side of the card, then seven will appear on the other side. Please pick the two cards you would choose to test that statement. Statement. So I will go ahead and if, you, if you'd like, you can go ahead and put this on pause and think about your answer or maybe you're very quick and you know exactly what you want to pick and we will soon go over each of these cards and figure out which answer is correct. Okay, so once again, that statement is if A then seven, and I asked you to pick two cards that would you, that you would use to test that statement. Now, if you chose A, most people choose A, and congratulations, you're correct. You're off to a good start. A is a part of the statement, and the presence of the number seven is contingent on the presence of A. So if A then seven, if you turn over the letter A and you find the number seven, you will have tested that statement and you will confirm its veracity. If, on the other hand, you turn over A and you find another number, you will have tested that statement and you will have shown it to be false. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, if you chose D, I'm going to assume that maybe you thought this was a trick question and you thought if you turned over D and maybe you found seven, you would have tested the statement, but unfortunately you would be wrong because if you turn over D and you find the number seven, well, that's wonderful, but 
you didn't really test anything because the presence of seven only depends on the letter A, meaning that the statement itself is if A, then seven. So that's the statement that you're testing. You don't need to test if D, then seven. Seven could show up on any card, really, but with any letter, paired with any letter. But you're only testing the statement if A, then seven. So D would really not matter. And of course, if you turned over D and you found another number, again, it wouldn't have any bearing on anything. You haven't tested anything. If you chose number two, you are correct. But let's go on to card number seven, because this is the other one that most people pick. And the reason why is because it's in the statement, if A, then seven. But if you turn over seven and you find the letter A, well, that's wonderful. You've confirmed your bias. What bias? You might ask me, you know, Tuesday, what are you talking about? What bias? The bias you formed when I told you the statement, if A, then seven. We, as humans, like to confirm what we've been told. So it's not testing the statement. We're just merely trying to confirm what we were told. So if I turn over seven and I find A, that's wonderful, but I haven't tested anything. I've merely confirmed a bias. And what's interesting about this test is that it's just letters and numbers. Who cares about letters and numbers? It's not even information that I'm emotionally attached to. It's not even something that I didn't even use any fallacious arguments to manipulate you into believing anything. I just merely made a statement. But again, we want to test that statement. We don't want to confirm firm our bias that we develop just hearing that statement. But if you chose to, you are correct because you are now testing the statement. If you turn over to and you find the letter A, then you've tested the statement and you can definitively show that it's false as it pertains to these four cards. But if you turn over to and find another letter, then you've tested the statement and you can confirm that the statement would be true as it pertains to these four cards. So the whole purpose of this test is to demonstrate, number one, how easy it is for us to form a bias, and number two, to maybe think about how we're looking at information. Because we're told something, for whatever reason, the human mind has this desire to run out and confirm what we've been told. We want to look and we want to look at all the information that confirms what we've been told. But what we really need to be doing is looking for information we haven't been told. What haven't these people told us? How do we test this information? And this requires us to go back and think about what arguments are being used. Identify those fallacious arguments that are being fed to you, and then figure out what you're not being told. Go through the previous episode where I talked about the Socratic method, asking all of the questions, going through the who, what, when, where, why, how, looking at primary source material, looking at what other people are saying, looking at the other side, getting outside of your box, as it were, looking at things with nuance and understanding that it's not always black, it's not always white. It's okay to have biases. It's okay to come to the table with whatever experiences you've had in life. It's part of what makes us unique. It's part of what forms our personality. But we need to be aware of what our biases are. If you're someone who's had bad experiences with the police or you know somebody that's had bad experiences, chances are you're going to view anything police do in a negative way and you need to be weary of that and you need to remind yourself of that, that not all police are bad, not all interactions are bad, that there is another side of the story. Maybe you're someone who has very good experiences with the police or you know, you have people in your family that are on the police force. You need to remember for you, you would need to remember that not all police are wonderful. Sometimes some police are bad. So we always have to be aware of what our biases are and then go out and test them. Always go out and test them. Always look at the arguments that are being made. Are they fallacious arguments? Are you being emotional?
emotionally manipulated? Are you just going out and trying to confirm what you've been told? I've talked a lot about Michael Jackson on this channel. I have an entire series about Michael Jackson and exploring all of the propaganda that surrounds Michael Jackson. And the reason this case, or I mean, I don't know what you want to call it. There's many cases around Michael Jackson, but it, it, it's sort of a, an interesting story because so many of us were affected by Michael Jackson propaganda. We were told for years and years upon years that he was this wonderful person. He's so talented. He's so wonderful. He's so nice. And of course, the line of, he didn't have a childhood. Everyone needs to, everyone needs to know. He just loves the little children. Well, unfortunately, he loved the children a little bit too much. Um, but of course, he didn't think he was hurting a child because in his mind, that's how pedophiles think. They don't think that they're hurting anybody. But if you're told this over and over again, what happens is you go out and you look for information, but you look for information that confirms good things about Michael Jackson. You, you go out and you look for all the things that confirm your bias about Michael Jackson. And unfortunately, you haven't tested anything. So that's why we still have these fans that pop up out of nowhere. I mean, they're they're on the internet, but they're always out there. They're always fighting and defending Michael. But the problem is they're not looking for any information. They're not interested in the truth. The only thing they're interested in is information that confirms their bias. And anything that doesn't jive with that that conclusion is dismissed or it's called a lie or, or or the person making the claim is attacked, whatever it is. When you're dealing with somebody who is only interested in confirming their bias, you are not going to deal with a rational person. And unfortunately, what is happening with these true crime documentaries or, you know, or whether we're talking about Michael Jackson, whatever we're talking about, you can take seemingly reasonable people and turn them into extremely highly emotional, irrational people. And it becomes very, very difficult. And we have to be aware of that in ourselves as well, because there are many areas that we we all have our weaknesses and we all have our biases. We all have these imperfections about us. But the more time we take to identify what is propaganda, what are fallacies, what are fallacious arguments, what are ways we can test what it is we're being told. When we take the time to be aware of all of the stuff, we can then look at each piece of information in an objective way and we can come to correct conclusions. It is possible to know what happened. It is possible to put the puzzle pieces together. It is possible. There are some people out there that are just critics to be critics and they'll just argue to argue of course, there's nothing you can do about that. But if you're interested in learning, you're interested in learning how to view things, how to think critically, how to think logically, how to use the scientific method, we want to put this all together. We want to utilize everything. And in the next episode, I, I will be doing just that. I will be taking all of the things I talked about and sort of putting everything together for you so you can form a, a better understanding of how to approach these true crime cases, how to approach these these movies, because we owe it to ourselves not to be fooled by these money-making pieces, because that's ultimately what it boils down to. It's breaking down our justice system. It's creating division. It's really hurting all of us in the end. It really is. It's putting a divide between sane ideas and reality with insanity and irrationality, and we owe it to ourselves to not be manipulated by these types of films. We owe it to ourselves to tell Hollywood enough is enough. We're not going to be manipulated by you. We're not going to be divided and we're not going to be told that our justice system is awful when in reality it's really not that bad. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. It never will be perfect, but it's not that bad. It really isn't that darn bad. And the cases that they're using, I mean, lately it's been the Rodney Reed. We had the Central Park Five. There, there's several of these documentaries that are being made. It's just garbage, just garbage. We got more stuff being made about West Memphis Three. They're guilty. They're guilty as 
as guilty can be. It's a joke what these people are trying to tell us, the way they manipulate things, the way they twist things, and they get you to believe in something, and the next thing you know, you're inadvertently supporting a rapist, a pedophile, a murderer, and you, you're not even aware of it. Most of these people are not even aware that they've been manipulated because they're not aware of all of, the th- all of these topics that I've been talking about, and confirmation bias is the biggest one, and we're all guilty of it. Everybody's guilty of confirmation bias, everybody, but once you're aware of it and you look for it, And as I said, you put all the other information together and you start thinking about it and looking at things objectively, it becomes much easier to figure out what's going on, especially as it pertains to these cases, because there are answers here. When it comes to these true crimes and stuff, there are answers and there are facts. Not everything is a mystery. A lot of times it's just a mystery if you make it a mystery. Okay, so in the next episode, as I said, I'm going to be tying everything together, putting everything together in a nice big bow for everyone and I believe that will make 10 episodes of why they are guilty. In the meantime, if you like and you have any questions or if there's something you'd like me to go over or if you feel I've missed something, please go ahead and let me know and I will love to hear from you. I hope everyone is doing okay and staying safe. I encourage everyone to really focus on their immune system. Build up your immune system as best as you can. Make sure you're taking vitamin A, vitamin C, try to get a little exercise in. I know for me it's been hard because there's no gym. There's no gym to go to, so I'm stuck with a yoga ball and some stretch bands, but that's a whole nother story. Anyway, I hope everyone is doing well. Stay in if you can. Try not to go out. Make sure you're, you know, as I said, taking care of yourself and the people around you, and I will be back. 